hello you guys welcome back to another video slash episode thank you so much for joining me today today we going we gonna get into it real bad <laughs> so it is may we're nearing the end of spring about to enter summer and blossom but may is a huge month for me it's a reminder um as if a couple days ago it has been a year since i have left my abuser and i did not expect what would come up with that anniversary that did mind you i've had a breakup before but when i was when i had my first breakup the year later i was already in another relationship i don't know if i just wasn't thinking about it or if it's just because my last relationship was abusive or what but i remember like obviously i remember i left a year ago it's not you know it's just something you remember but i feel like honestly i was expecting to think of it as more of a celebratory time like whenever it would hit six months or something i'll be like oh i'm so proud of you but i was actually met with a lot of anxiety and reminders for context in that relationship i was emotionally abused and sexually abused um I'm currently in therapy since January, working through the sexual trauma, but I feel like we talk about abuse, I was going to say often, not that often. <laughs> like, I think honestly, my generation is getting a little bit better, but like, we still have a lot of work to do. And I don't know if it's just me, but what comes to my head when I hear of someone being like, I was in an abusive relationship, my mind straight goes to like physical like oh someone was hitting you or you guys just physically fight when like i did i feel like we don't recognize a lot of different types of abuse but especially emotional abuse and i feel like more people have been through that than they probably think or recognize and so i want to get deep into that today and talk about the very very long lasting effects i think that so often when we talk about abuse we talk about like, oh my God, thank God you left before it's too late. Thank God you left. You know, that person can't get to you anymore, whatever the case is. But I feel like we don't often talk about, okay, we left, but the memories are still there. The traumas are still there. Lots of people, like, it. nothing, I mean, nothing really changes, I feel like, in your emotional, like, spiritual realm. It's only like you subtracted the person physically. But it's like nothing really changes up here in the mind until you start to do that work. And it is a very long process. You know, I feel like a huge conversation we need to have is how lots of abuse coexists and kind of help each other out. Because I definitely think that the emotional abuse I endured most definitely paired and helped that person um, sexually abuse and assault me. And I think emotional abuse is pretty self-explanatory, but um, there are people new to this and like, you know, who would like a scientific definition. So when you gather, when you look up emotional abuse and you gather the stuff you see, it is basically um, when people verbally make people feel isolated or scared or anxious, like they use tactics to enforce these feelings, but it's verbally, you know, through words. And boy, does that isolation part hit for me. Um, I was with someone who was like very, had a very anxious attachment style, I think because of what they had been through in childhood, because of what they had been through in childhood, because of what they had been through in past relationships. And I just remember this person always being very anxious, like always wanting to control me the outcome of stuff, what happens where I was like a little bit more on the secure avoidant side is like, of course, I cared about the relationship. I had my anxious moments, but I was like, I understood from what I went through my last relationship. Like I can't control anything. So it's just like, we just got to, you know, do our best and hope that's what it worked. And that was the opposite of what my abuser thought. So often when we would have fights or I would be accused of something, um, like I said, very anxious, very insecure. Like I would always just have these conversations with him and try to be like, try to find a middle ground. And me trying to find a middle ground or explain where I'm coming from so maybe he can like hear me better 
his response was always to isolate me like no one else thinks that you really think someone else would want to date someone who does that who says this like no one else would do that blah 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 blah, blah. like that was always his go-to line and that is so manipulative y'all because it's like you know damn well there is always someone who will agree with you like it was just really coming from a place of manipulation and like emotional abuse like he would just always try to convince me no one else thinks this way no one else thought that like <sighs> one prime example that i think maybe still affects my career choice to this day i don't know i don't know anyway um right now i'm more focused on um putting myself out there through social media but back then like when I graduated high school, like the first two years I was out of high school, I was like, I want to be an actor. Like I was on the casting sites. I was submitting. I was so excited to hear back for any little thing. I was following casting directors. And I had told him that from the jump, like, I want to be an actor. And first he was so cool about it. But then he was like, wait, would you like play someone's partner? And I was like, mm. like, I mean, it depends on the role if it's a meaningful role like it's not like i want to do that single or not i just it's kind of you know but at the end of the day it's acting so i'm like yes like if it was an opportunity i wanted to take um and he would always try to isolate me anytime we would argue about that conversation mind you if someone didn't want to date an actor we should have just not been together but y'all know young people are stupid <laughs> and i remember anytime we would have that conversation and like he would just re-question me or he would always basically try to get me to change my mind. And I'm like, I'm never going to lie to you. Like you either accept me as I, as I am and what space I'm at in this moment, or you don't like people who don't want to date actors is completely fine. Like his views were completely fine, but don't date an actor. Nigga, you kept, cho you chose to keep dating me. Oh, okay. But, um, he would, whenever we would talk about certain instances, he'd be like, no one would be okay with their girlfriend doing that no one like no one thinks that like ask anybody no no one would be and i would always just be like there are actor couples who do who play these roles because it's roles it's work it's not real and they're happily married they have kids and stuff i was like what do you mean and he would always just shoot me down and be like no no one thinks that you don't think that that doesn't mean everybody else in the world doesn't think that and that is just so manipulative and like emotionally abusive that he would always try to isolate me when I disagreed with him. If you want a clear ex example of um, the psycho I was dealing with, I do have a story called My Psycho Ex-Boyfriend that provides a clear example of all this when I had a modeling job. If you want to go check that out in my story times playlist. So as you can already see by that, it is very emotionally abusive to shoot someone down, isolate them and make them feel like um, they're very alone in anything whenever you disagree with them. It's pretty clear. But notice how I said earlier that I think emotional abuse can coexist and help out with a lot of other abuses, including um, the sexual abuse I endured. Yeah, so let's get into that. In this relationship, I was, I was sexually assaulted a couple times, but a lot of it was sexual harassment. This was a relationship where I started dating someone who um, lived, you know, in my county, in my state, but, um, and I'm from California, but then he ended up going to school at ASU, which is in Arizona. And when we became long distance, that's really when I started to see this sexual harassment start to happen often, and it came with emotional abuse. It was a lot of asking me to do phone stuff and... Um, if I would say I didn't want to do that or I would just feel comfortable watching, but I wasn't comfortable participating, I would always get met with negative emotions like, okay, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to be on FaceTime anymore. Or like, does this mean you don't think I'm attractive? Like, why do you always say no? Like, blah, blah, blah. And it's crazy how I didn't see how bad that was at the time. Like, it's just because I feel like when it comes to the conversation, of like sexual harassment a lot of times i think of strangers like okay yeah random dudes on the street random dudes on the internet but you don't like your first thought is not like oh someone you're in a committed relationship can still do that to you like you know when it's still your choice committed relationship or not i remember times when i literally would be like can we facetime um and you know 
he'd be like, yeah, like you want to do this though? And I'd be like, no, I don't want to do that. But like, and then he'd be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to take a nap. Like, even if it wasn't, <laughs> It's so crazy, y'all. I'm so sad. Even if I wasn't met with negative emotions, it was always some type of isolation, like a punishment for not wanting to give anything sexually. Um, it's actually really sad. And although I'd say maybe two thirds of the time I'd stand my ground, just cry myself to sleep, feel terrible because someone made me feel like I'm a terrible person because. I made the decision of what I want to do in that way. Um, sometimes emotional abuse would work and I would do things or whatever he requested. And after it, I would not feel good. Like I really wouldn't, I would want to cry or I would cry or yeah, like literally the house I used to live in during that time, my parents' house, I was just there the other day. And I remember I like, I literally just had a flashback. Like I could just look at like when I was doing a request for him in the mirror, I can just look at that spot and see myself over a year ago doing that. So uncomfortable. So not wanting to do that. And I, it literally just makes me want to cry. Like, so I just want to make it very clear, even though it is the obvious. Um, if you're feeling like this, no matter who it's from, no matter if it's someone that you consensually do things with, it's someone that is that you want to in the future, but you don't want to right now, or it's a stranger, you feeling valid, like nobody has the right to like do that to you, to like make all these requests, bug you multiple times after you said no. That's another thing I went through so often when we were in person, always asking me to sleep naked or do something like that that I wasn't and it's like no matter how many times I said no I would still get asked almost every night almost every time and it's like that is not okay like that is not okay y'all no matter who it comes from no matter if you're a girl boy non-binary person so it's so obvious but it wasn't very obvious to me when I was in that vulnerable situation of how bad that was so if you've ever been through something similar, um, I'm really, really sorry and your feelings are valid. Um, and yeah, just don't let anybody do that to you, no matter the title. I'm low-key talking. <laughs> I'm low-key talking to my my inner child myself a year or two ago too. So so yeah, all in all, emotional abuse just made me feel very like low about myself because like I said a lot of times I was able to recognize like this person has problems but when someone is constantly trying to convince you you're a terrible person because you don't want to do this or you're a bad partner because you don't want to do this um I think eventually it does start to imprint on your head a lot I would have lots of panic attacks anxiety attacks thinking I really am this terrible person because I'm saying no to something that I don't want to do or I'm setting a boundary um and it's really sad and so when i so i decided to leave the relationship about a year ago a year ago and i did not know that sometimes some of those feelings would pop up like i swear i swear and it comes up a lot of times i've had maybe two talking stages in the past year um since then but i've still never been with anyone physically sexually but I notice it come up a lot when it comes to me moving in my career, me trying to move forward in love. Like it comes with a lot of feelings of unworthiness and these feelings come up. And I remember at first I was just like, what is going on? Like, wait, is this true? Like, you know how sometimes thoughts come up, but as I made in one of my other videos where I said, don't let your thoughts take away your peace. I realized a lot of times that you have thoughts like this, they're not even your original thought, guys. They're not coming from your own mind. They're coming from what someone said or did to you. And when I realized that, I was like, oh shit. It was actually kind of sad. And it, well, it was sad. And it was a little bit frustrating to me too, because I realized like these feelings of unworthiness, feeling like someone won't accept me, or I don't deserve these things. I was like, it doesn't come from me telling myself this. I was like, 
it's literally the things my abuser said and convinced me of still popping up in my mind every now and then and me second guessing myself like wait is that true am i not worthy of love am i not worthy of enjoying pleasure am i not worthy of going after the career i want and it's so sad that some bum ass person like can still be living in my head a little bit and making me second guess myself when I'm the victim and I honestly feel like no matter what type of abuse you went through I feel like this could be a, a universal feeling like that sometimes you do really still carry the weight and carry these thoughts that you have to fight off because that's really what it was like I found myself almost believing it sometimes before I realized the source I'm like, the source is not me. It's literally not me. And like a lot of times anxiety and mental health is seen as a bad thing, which it's not fun to go through. But I remember my therapist gave me this revelation where she was like, sometimes these things are good because it's like reminders. Like I really learned in that time, like I got to remind myself, you know, that's not true. You know, you're going to be in love again. You know, you are deserving of a healthy relationship. You know, you're deserving of the career you want happiness like that is not true and i feel like sometimes maybe we need these things to remind ourselves um and that was really huge for me i also had another realization actually the other night <laughs> um like the one year since abuse which i feel like should be since leaving abuse i feel like should be so celebratory but it's actually filled with a lot of flashbacks and like reminders again that I just have to remind myself like I'm safe I'm here I did that by leaving I'll never allow that again and because of that I'm able to move on but just the other night I was having a little bit of anxiety just like it's hard to see myself um in love again in a sexual relationship because of the abuse I endured and I remember a lot of times in therapy, when I tell her about these feelings I have, she asks, where do I feel it? Like, where do I feel it in my body? And a lot of times I don't know. And I realized the other night, I feel it in my womb. I don't know if any other essay survivors can feel that, can relate to that. But I was like, whoa, I feel like that says a lot. Like on some real shit, if any of the spiritual baddies are watching this video, um, like I hear there's some spiritual stuff that you could do for womb healing and stuff like that. Maybe I need a little bit of that, but I thought that was crazy. Cause I was like, that makes so much sense that when I'm feeling feelings of unworthiness, like doubting myself being in a space like that again, the fact that I feel it in my womb and that's it. And I went through sexual trauma. I feel like makes all the sense in the world. Like your body really stores that energy you feel me but yeah guys although it has been over a year since i have been in contact with that person the emotional abuse really it really doesn't just go away easy it has a lot of lasting effects whether no matter who it's from either i know some people go through emotional abuse from the home from the family life from a friend like it is really like our duty to ourselves to like unlearn so much. Like I feel like society breeds people pleasers and they breed us to think like that we should take into account every consideration, every opinion that we should consider everything we hear, like, you know, every opinion, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't, it really doesn't. Like, I know it's so corny, but what I used to always try to convince this person that I was in a relationship with of too, ironically, is like the only opinion that literally matters is yourself. There's going to be so many different opinions, but literally like if I think I'm pretty as fuck and someone says I'm ugly, that literally can't do anything to me. I think I'm pretty, okay, I think I'm pretty though. And I'm the one who actually lives in this body. So if someone else says that, okay, I'm the person who sees every inch of this who sees myself the most often like if someone else thinks otherwise it literally doesn't matter because i already have my own opinion locked in you know it's like a lot harder to get to a place where you feel like that all the time but i promise it's life-changing but yeah guys um 
in conclusion, things don't stop in the energetic mental realm just because they stop in the physical realm. I feel like way more people need to wake up and realize that mental health is real, takes a lot of unlearning. Um, And I'm still getting there, even though I get up here and I share what I've learned. um, I still have so much to learn. I'm sure I have a lot more to experience, but this is just, you know, what I can offer to you guys and to myself, because I think community is really important when I watch a video and I really feel hurt. Oh, shit. Like I went through that, too, or I felt that, too. It really it feels like a hug. So especially when I can't really relate to a lot of people physically about what I've been through um, or maybe I can. But, you know, a lot of people don't talk about it and I don't blame them because this shit is hard. But yeah. So I just want to remind anyone out there, if you have been through something similar, any type of abuse, physical, emotional, sexual. Um, I'm so proud of you for, you know, not being in that situation anymore. But yeah, for anyone watching who's been through any type of abuse, emotional, physical, sexual, um, proud of you for existing because it is hard. It takes a lot of unlearning. It's a long process. Like I said, literally been over a year for me but the effects are still here because the effects are lasting, but I am pushing through it to get the life I deserve. Okay. Because I deserve financial freedom from a creative career. I deserve to be in love one day. I deserve to have a healthy sexual relationship, to have a family one day, to not be scared to do certain things. And that is why I'm in therapy and I'm continuing to push through even when it's hard because I know I deserve to show up for myself. And you do too. So, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, I have a playlist called Yap Sessions full of lots of other similar healing videos. If you know this hit a little bit and you're trying to laugh a little bit, I got story time videos too. I'm a little funny, you know, if you want to go check that out. Um, But please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. I'd really appreciate it if you enjoy my content. Um, But yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for listening to me, Yap all the way through and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.